Hello, my name is Glenn Song, and I'm the creator, author, illustrator of the webcomic This Mortal Coil. And today I'm going to give you a demo on how I did the 2D animation uh, for my webcomic back in September. Just a real quick peek of what it looks like. This is the page in question. There's actually a couple of pages. But the. Uh, you can see there, uh, it's a lot of complicated uh, traditional 2D animation, but done uh, using Manga Studio and Blender. We won't go into that part of it, so I'll just show you the very kind of basics of how I did a lot of the keyframe animation that you see, like, uh, for instance, Kamika's hair here moving around, and then this, mo this motion that's all keyframe. And if we move down here, there's Hannah and her uh, her eye blink. Even the butterfly, the one that flies away, is also uh, done using you know traditional kind of 2D animation techniques, as well as the dress movement on uh, this last picture here. So that's I'm going to show you a very simple version of how I did that. Let's uh, swing over to Manga Studio, where I just have an empty scene set up, and I'll basically walk you through the entire process of how I of how I did this. So just a couple things you should know. For one thing, I'm not an animator by trade. Uh, I'm just doing this for fun. But I did take a class in how to do animation, and I do know some of the very basic principles. Uh, if you're looking for anything more complicated, I'm not the guy to go to. But uh, I'll show you what I know. Uh, and the second thing to know is that Manga Studio 5 itself is not an animation. Uh, software. It's mainly for comic illustration. And the way that it works is uh, is basically using the layer system as a timeline. So you can see here I've got my first layer and we're just going to draw something uh, just draw something simple. You know, I'm getting simpler than like, just drawing a ball of some kind. The next frame would basically just be another layer, and then you would just draw that sitting on top. So here it is, the ball is getting bigger and it's moving down. The third layer, so make a fourth layer. It's kind of stretching out. And there you go. So we have five layers for this animation. So if we move on to the next step, we now have five frames of our animation and we just want to export these frames. So if I go to export single layer, we'll call this file, we'll just call it F1 for frame one. We have the PNG settings, so we'll just accept them as is. So we'll do the next frame, F2. As you can see, there's a lot of manual labor labor involved in actually exporting these so because this animation is mercifully just five frames you know that's not too bad to do uh, but it can be very it can become very tedious the more complicated you get and I'm just showing you something really basic here just to get the uh, idea I can go on maybe I will go on after this and show you something a little more complicated Alright, so here we go to the last frame. Call this F5. And so, there you go. We have all five frames. So if I uh, go to the, uh, this is the animation, this is the folder in which they're all dropped into. We've got all five PNGs here. And uh, what we want to do is basically stitch them together into an animated GIF. So there's a couple ways to do this. Um, the easiest, because this is just a five frame animation, is just to use something like gifmaker.me. So if I go back to the web browser, this is gifmaker.me, and you know, it's... Actually, you can't see the file when 
the file screen, but it's okay. I mean, basically, all I'm doing is going to the file folder I just saved all those images to and uh, grabbing them all and then opening them, and now you'll see them being uploaded. So all the all five images are loaded, and now you can see here in the uh, right hand side, you can see all of them, you can see it moving uh, and moving kind of choppy and slow. But right underneath, uh, this is the canvas size. You can change that. We won't do that. Uh, you know, it's fine the way it is. Really, you want to adjust the uh, animation timing speed. So let's do something like 120. So you can see it's a little smoother at 120. If we go like 80, maybe it'll be even better. Uh, it'll be a lot quicker though. Yeah, so that looks a little more smoother. This hundred would be fine. And you know, when you're happy setting your timing and you're happy with your images, you can just hit create and give animation. And since this is not a big uh, it's not a big image. It's not. There's not a lot of images. You almost immediately get the result, which is uh, right here. So that's basically it. You know, I've, I've just shown you how I, how to animate in Manga Studio. And if that's all you needed to know, because you're just trying to do something that has one or two frames of animation, then this is going to suit your needs pretty well. So I do have these five images here. What I can I can show you real quick is another alternate way of uh, of doing um, the GIF export. So if you get something called uh, GIMP, in GIMP you have a uh, file open as layers. You'll have this open image um, dialog box and you can select all five of your, or in this case, all five of these images and open them. And what GIMP will do for you is arrange them in uh, a set of layers. And what we can do from there is go to export as, and here's the export as dialog. And we can go to GIF images. And we can name this, uh, I'm just going to name it out.gif. Uh, GIMP is kind of weird. You do have to put the ex you have to put the extension when you name it, otherwise it's going to throw up a warning. So I'll just click export. We get the GIF options here. Um, I leave the interlacing off. I don't think we really want that. In any case, you can add a comment. Uh, this is a, obviously the important one as animation. I set it to loop forever, but of course you don't need to do that. And then here you can set the uh, millisecond interval in between each frame. And basically you just hit export. We've got the GIF right here. And then if I go to our web browser, that's the output from uh, from GIMP. So. Uh, let's go back to GIMP real quick. There is one other nice thing you can do with uh, GIMP in terms of uh, animation, and that's doing some optimization. So you can see here there's this optimize for GIF. If you click it, it'll just go through and it'll do its thing, and as long as you don't touch it um, and you export it as is, it can lower the file size of your GIF. So if you're hitting some kind of limit, then that'll help you out there. We can jump back to, so we're done with GIMP right now. So now you know the two ways to export, offline by a GIMP and online by a GIF maker. And I'm sure you can find, if you Google, you can find all kinds of other sites that will allow you to um, export GIFs and even do compression for GIFs. I think we'll stop there. The video is running a bit long. If there's interest, I could do another video on the more complex animation I did for this mortal coil. If you want to know what those other animation programs are, I listed them in the description below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it via social media, and subscribe to this channel for more. Thanks again for watching.